Good morning fellow woodworkers, welcome back to another video. So I received these two packages this morning and I'm going to unbox it and I'm going to assemble it. So exciting, can't wait for it and it's going to take ages. This is what I know for a fact. See you later. Yes, you are reading that correctly. It's a Shapoko Pro XL by Carbide 3D. CNC router which is pretty damn huge. And yeah, it's going to take a while to assemble that thing. Probably a few hours. First, I unboxed most packages, but made sure that I still knew which bigger box I pulled them out of. They are labeled for a reason, I suppose. <laughs> I like that little detail. You can put this onto your shape hook built by Jens, for example. That's cool. I really like that little detail. So I even bought the router from Shapoko, this is the original Shapoko one. I still have a Makita router, a palm router lying around, but I thought I might as well get myself the whole bundle. So I think I have found everything except for a manual. I can't find any kind of manual here. Um, <laughs> I hope that there is some kind of a manual because I have no idea how to assemble such a huge thing. We are going to see. Grabbing my phone, I figured that I would find one on either the Carvet 3D website or their YouTube channel. And you guessed it, I was damn right. Got myself a blanket to not damage the machine in any kind of way. I then started to follow the tutorial, installing the mainframe first. Next were the linear modules, which dictate the y-axis movement basically. Those were also the first parts that included quite some wiring that I had to install one after another. Now was time to install the x-axis, which will also later guide the router and the z-axis motor. In comparison to my Snapmaker, the Shapoko is belt driven, which was pretty new to me. These are the black bands you can see me installing right now. This gave me quite a bit of trouble since Winston Moy's instructions weren't clear enough on how to tighten them properly and if I needed to cut the overhanging parts off after installing them. But after reconsidering and not giving a proper fuck, I simply cut them off for the memes as the alpha chat that I am. That is one of the only criticisms I have though with their video, other than that their presentation and execution of the tutorial was on point and easy to follow. Now, mainframe done! Now it's off to installing the Z-axis motor and the belt it will be guided on. Oh goodness me, I nearly freaked everything up. So, the, the Shapoko is working with belts. And these belts right here are manufactured to fit perfectly for the Shapoko XXL. But, oh, by, but I only have the Shapoko XL. Thing now was that... <laughs> No one said in the instruction what to do with those longer belts and it seems like you have to cut these off and this should be the case, at least for the shorter tracks. Now I did the very same thing for the longer track, but for the longer track it basically fits perfectly in the normal case, but I cut this part off, but ooh, I was so lucky it still worked. I only had like one or two millimeters left of the belt here to, to fix everything in place, but it lately worked out at the end. Oh, my heart. My poor heart. After getting over my stupidity, I then plugged in cables and secured the... Uh, what I like to call making sure that no wires get caught in the machine thingies. I'm pretty damn certain that this is the proper scientific name that has been given to these black snake creatures. Next, I plugged in all the cables into their proper places on the control board. And then I secured the router's cable in the two, making sure that no wires get caught in the machine thingies and fasten it on the set axis holder. Last but not least, I had to screw down the aluminum floor panels that hold the MDF spoil boards. That one took quite a while though, since I screwed everything up. Literally. Plug in the last cables and close in the control entity. Oh, 
Finally, most important step, telling the world who assembled this thing. Proudly presented by Pop of Lemmy. Yes. And this is as far as the assembly goes. As far as I am concerned, this should be fully assembled and fully functional. Only a few details left. I'm gonna leave it how it is for today because I'm kind of exhausted, but it was a quick build. Only took me overall two to three hours, I think, which is completely okay, in my opinion, for setting up a CNC. I mean, my Snapmaker, for example, took me longer to assemble, so yeah, that's pretty cool. So, pretty satisfied with what I got here, and it seems to be pretty stable. But there are still one or two things I'm confused about, which I didn't find in the online instructions. Namely, um, some things were missing, um, and for example, I don't know where these cables go at the moment, so I need to see about these. And other than that, I still have a bit of rattling going on on this axis. And I think it has to do with the belt. Maybe it's not um, stretched enough. Just take a look at that. I don't know why that is, but I need to fix it. But for now, I thank you for watching. And you are probably going to see a test run of the Shape Poco at the very end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more content as well as the videos, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel. See ya!